Welcome to the uh, 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. And uh, today's topic is, um, since last week we talked about silence, um, and this week we're going to talk about the I thought, because people went been asking me questions uh, that when I talk about this I and where is the source of our suffering, which is the source of our identification. And people are asking me, what is this? What are you referring to? What do you mean by this I? So I'm going to get into that today. And, um, and that's going to clear a lot of things. And I'm going to give you how you can work with it and give you a practice that if you work and do it diligently, what's going to happen is every time you use it, you're going to realize that your mind becomes absolutely quiet. So we're going to get into that later. Now, I'm going to talk about something I've brushed on it in the past. I've talked about it. Um, I never really got into it uh, so much in details. Uh, but it's always been something that I have referred to. Now, the fifth dimensional consciousness, this ascension to fifth dimension, this emergence to come to the 5D quantum awareness that a lot of people talk about, uh, that is a top, a hot topic around the world. Uh, ascension to fifth dimension, to 5D quantum awareness. The, the roots of it is in the ancient Advaita Vedanta teaching. The, they both very well connected to each other. The 5D quantum awareness arriving in that consciousness is a consciousness of the oneness means that you're, you have transcended your individual consciousness into the collective consciousness. Now, these are all words, and they're easy to say and easy to repeat, because I've been there and I've done that, than really living it and really understanding what, what it means. What does it mean? The problem that we have, and well, we can say it's a problem or we can say it's by design of the samsara. Samsara is the Sanskrit word for the world of illusion. This world that we're in, that it causes uh, a lot of suffering, and we can see it, it's happening, is called in Sanskrit, samsara. So, on one hand, you may be asking, well, why does it have to be there? Why is this world is created, and we have to come back into it, and we have to develop a karmic relationship, and then we just keep popping back into this, and and why we have to suffer, and uh, the entire time we're in it, uh, there's stuff we want we can't get, or when we get what we want, then we lose it, or when we get what we want, then, we, then we're not happy with it and we want something else. One way to the, tackle this and to recognize it is something that in most spiritual teachings, uh, most literature, and especially in pseudo uh, um, spirituality these days, they never refer to it and they don't talk about it. You have to dig deep and go to the ancient uh, scriptures and very deep teachings to get a hang of it or get an idea of what I'm going to talk about. So, 
what happens is that every single human being, when they wake up in the morning, they have the same thought. The first thought for everybody, it doesn't matter from which race, religion, uh, what country, belief system that you have, everybody has the same thought when they wake up in the morning. And that thought is the I. The I thought, me. A thought comes that I wake up and I say, oh, I'm tired, oh, I'm sleepy, or oh, um, I'm cold. If you pay attention, just uh, examine with yourself and pay attention when you wake up in the morning, what is your first thought? Well, your first thought is either I or referring to you as I, this me. And this me, this I thought that we are centering our life about it is simply a thought that arises in your mind as me, moi, separated from everything else. Because this I thought comes with this sense of separation. There is a notion that you are not one with everything else. It and from childhood, from the time you were born, I would say the first two years, your consciousness is of the oneness. But around two years, two and a half years, that's, that's why they call it the terrible two, is that the consciousness of the oneness begins to identify to its individual character and begins to, in this emergence into identifying of its separation, then everything becomes mine and theirs. That's why when you see kids around age two, that's, they call it, in, in America, they call it the terrible two, is that is the identification happens to an individual, and all of a sudden, like Johnny has got the toy here, and and uh, he goes like, no, it's mine, this is mine, and doesn't want to share it with his brother or his friend. He doesn't want to have the toy, but he doesn't want anybody else to take the toy. So that's where this identity of separation starts to form. And everything and everyone around you, your family, your friends, the TV, programs, the songs, everyone is fortifying this identification, fortifying that this sense that you have that you are someone, you're an individual, and you're separated is correct, is that's who you are, that's what you are. So you grow up with this false identity, believing that this is your existence. And your entire life, you are trying to protect it and defend it. And every time if you're, you're physically being threatened, uh, if it comes to a point of life and death, the mechanism really kicks in that you have to protect the body and survive. In addition to that, you have a sense, very strong sense, that this is my life and I have to take care of myself. And if I don't take care of myself, nobody else will. 